Okay, welcome everyone to the Judiciary Committee hearing. My name is Carl Rhodes, I'm chair of the committee. This Zoom meeting and YouTube live stream event will include one agenda, the 9.30 agenda. The other members of the Judiciary Committee are Vice Chair Gabbard, uh, Senator Elefante, Senator San Buena Ventura, and Senator Awa. Um, in the unlikely event, we have to abruptly end this hearing due to major technical difficulties. The committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business on Tuesday, February 7 at 10 a.m. here in room 016, and a public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. For those testifying remotely, your, your audio will be muted and video disabled, and so it's your turn to go. Uh, for everyone, it's a two-minute time limit, although members often have questions, so if you can hang around. Sorry, now other people can't hear. If, uh, if we have a two minute time limit, but if you members often have questions, so if you can hang around until after the until the end of the uh, uh, testimony, you'll often uh, be called back up if you're if you'd like to be. Um, let's see. Oh, and if, if there's any glitches for those uh, testifying online, we'll try to come back to you, but uh, we do have your written testimony if we're not able to. Okay, with that, let's go and get going on. Um, the first bill, which is HSB 482, wishful thinking on my part that we were already passed the cross. Uh, this is the Judiciary Budget, SB 482. First up is Tom Mc Policy and Planning Director for the Judiciary. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Rhodes, Vice Chair Gabbard, and committee members. I am Tom Mick, head of the Judiciary Policy and Planning Department. I will briefly summarize our testimony in support of this the Judiciary Appropriations Bill. Overall, we're requesting eight new permanent positions and $7.8 million for fiscal year 24 and $6.9 million for fiscal year 25. Included in this is $600K for furniture, fixture, and equipment items for the new Wahiwa Courthouse, and 500K for security, janitorial services, and camp costs for Holly Helenai, our new ju juvenile service shelter facility on Alton Street. Another 450K is for a First Circuit District Court judge and three related staff and two Third Circuit bailiffs. 2.3 million is requested for guardian ad litem legal counsel services an amount the legislature provided last year, but for one year only. Also being requested is another 2.3 million to restore funding for 33 of the 192 positions defunded during the pandemic. This includes funding for a first circuit court judge and two second circuit district court judges. Lastly is 565K for judges' salary increase mandated by the 2019 Commission on Salaries, 600K to replace the judiciary's fork of accounting system, and 260K for our share of the increase in costs for the state's risk management program. For CIP funding, we have six requests totaling $16.2 million attached to our testimony our details and pictures relative to these requests. Thank you for the opportunity to present our testimony and we're available to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Next is Jesse Cardoza for Hawaii Access to Justice Commission. In support, Jesse Suki, HSBA President-Elect. Also in support, Deidre Marie Iha, HSBA Appellate Section in support, Jonathan Bolton, HSBA Litigation Section in support, Alana Fujimori Kaina, Legal Aid Society of Hawaii on Zoom. Good morning. Good morning, um, Chair Rhodes, um, Vice Chair Gabbard here on behalf of the Legal Aid Society of Hawaii in support of the judiciary's budgets. Specifically, we're really grateful for the support of the, of the legislature in the past for civil legal services, but also wanted to communicate our support and interest in maintaining the increase for guardian ad litem and parent counsel services. Um, these services are critical to our community and the increase has allowed us to provide um, better services and ensuring that we can have more people providing these services. So happy to answer any questions. And again, um, in strong support of the judiciary's budget. Thank you. Next is uh, Rachel Figueroa for volunteer legal services. Thank you. Thank you. Now I saw her momentarily. Hey, Dr. Good morning. 
Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the Committee on Judiciary. Here for Volunteer, Volunteer Legal Services Hawaii, I am testifying in support of Senate Bill 42. I stand on my written testimony. Thank you for your time. I'm available for questions. Thank you. Next is Thomas Farrell. I'll stand on my written testimony. In support. Yes, in support. Uh, Stanley Rorick, uh, also in support. Oh, I'm sorry. It's supposed to be on Zoom. Stanley Rorick. There you are. <coughs> Can't hear you though. Still can't hear you. Uh, I don't know something's wrong. Can't hear anything. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Roy. Um, well, your your show is being unmuted, but. If it's any consolation, this exact same thing happened to me this morning. <laughs> uh, we'll see if you can. We'll try to figure out the. We'll try to figure out the technical stuff. But right now, we can't hear you. So we have your testimony and support. All right, that's all the uh, people who've signed up for SB four eighty two. Anyone else wish to testify on SB four eighty two? And I'll reserve the right to come back to Mr. Roar if we can get him back. Okay, seeing none, members' questions on SB 42. Uh, I had a couple of Mr. Mick, if you don't mind. So the budget include the budget request includes the restoration of funding for 33 positions. Yes. Uh, how how do you manage to get by without those 33 positions? Or, well, in a lot of ways, you had to kind of. Were they, were they left vacant or were they were just actually taken away? I can't remember. No, they were left vacant. These were defunded positions. Defunded. Yeah, they, they, uh, the legislature during COVID uh, defunded 192 of our right. positions. So, okay. yeah, you try, you try to play a balancing game. That's all I can say. You get more vacant positions, so you try to see, okay, can I fill a defunded vacant position, which in some cases we did. Otherwise, you let the vacancies maybe sit a little bit longer and try to use funding to uh, to shore up some of your other needs. So it was, it was kind of balancing. You cut back initially from doing certain things. You, you have ended up with certain, what do I want to call it? Delays in providing services. You don't, you can't provide services maybe, maybe as quickly as you could before. You know, so it, it's just, a, it's a lot of balancing. Okay. Each, each circuit or program had to kind of determine it itself. But, uh, how many, how many positions are currently on your vacancy list? It was like, uh, if you include that, you include in the defunded? Yes. Yeah, about 340, I think. Oh, wow, okay. Okay, I, I do have that somewhere here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, switching gears to um, one of the CIP requests was elevators at Kahumanu. Um, I think you guys asked for five million. Yes. If we if we gave you more money, can you, is it something that you, you you have to do in seriatim, as the as the lawyers would say, or can you do if you had more money, could you do a fast? Well, I, th I think part of the reason we only asked for five million is we didn't want to break the bank. Yeah, you could do more if we got more money. I think yeah, you could you could okay. do a couple of extra elevators because there's nine elevators there that they have to eventually right. replace. Right. So. If you look at it, this is basically covering, it's a lot of money, but it's covering about two elevators. Or, so you can kind of see what the increase would be. Okay. All right, thank you. Members, any other questions? Uh, can we try to go back to Mr. Roy before we leave this bill? Or has he already signed off? <laughs> no, nope, still nothing. Still can't hear you. Sorry about that. Okay, here's some maybe some help on the way here. Hang on just a second. 
treat this trip in my ear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, we can't hear you. We 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 have your we have your testimony and support, and we apologize. Okay, members. If there are no more questions on four eighty two, we'll go ahead and move on to SB nine nine two. Uh, 992 is proposing an amendment to Article, Article 6, Section 3 of the Hawaii State Constitution to increase the mandatory retirement age for state judges and justices from 70 to 75. First up is James Taube for the public defender. Uh, in support, next is Kat Brady for Community Alliance on Prisons. Good morning, Chair Rhodes, Vice Chair Gavin, members of the committee, Kat Brady testifying on behalf of Community Alliance on Prisons. You know, right now, 70 is kind of like the new 50. People are living longer. They're, you know, being healthy, doing more healthy things, eating better. And um, I, include, I included an article in my uh, testimony that basically said, 32 states are looking at the age of judges. Only one state, Kansas, is going backwards. They want it to be reduced to 65. But another rationale for higher limits is that we have judges who have a wealth of experience, and they could definitely be helping out the judiciary. In New Jersey, where the mandatory age was 70, judicial vacancies were at an all-time high, and the retired judges were filling in. So we need people with institutional experience, people with a breadth of experience on our bench. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next is Lynn Murakami Akatsuka in support. Gerald Silva in opposition. Kenneth Conklin in opposition. Susan Shawarowski, sorry, butchered your name uh, in opposition and Robert Kim in support. That's all the testimony we have on SB 992. Anyone else wish to testify on SB 992? Seeing none, members, questions? Yes, question. Senator Gabbard. Did you, judiciary take a position on this? Hmm. I'm Vice Chair Ron, my administrative director of the courts. Um, we did not take a formal position, although Judge Kim did submit testimony in support of the, the bill. Why not 80? Why 75? Is this arbitrarily 75? Or? This was, was not our bill, sir, so we're, we're not sure what the thought process was behind it. Okay, thank you, Ron. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, so it was my bill. We tried 80 about 10 years ago and it was rejected like two to one. So okay. I figured we'll try 75. And see <laughs> that. Yeah. Full disclosure. Thank you. Said, that's the phone there. Okay. Any other yeah. questions on SB 992? Uh, if not, let's move on to SB 1074. This proposes amendments to the Constitution of the state of Hawaii to amend the manner. Right, in which justices and judges are appointed, consented to, and retained. Uh, first up on SB 1074 is Thomas Berger for judiciary. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Rhodes and, and committee members. Thomas Berger, staff attorney at the Hawaii Supreme Court, testifying for the judiciary in opposition to Senate Bill 1074. As detailed in the written testimony, this bill would undermine the independence of Hawaii courts by adding a layer of politics to the reappointment process. The current reappointment process has been in place since 1978, for over 40 years, and the result for Hawaii is a judiciary that is politically independent and diverse. The second concern with this bill is its proposal on per diem judges. Per diem judges are essential to allow the district courts and family courts to continue their operations when the presiding judge is not available. The judiciary opposes this bill because it opens the door to the legislature eliminating the Chief Justice's authority to appoint per diem judges. Currently, the Hawaii Constitution protects against this result. In conclusion, the judiciary opposes Senate Bill 1074, and we would respectfully request the committee hold the measure. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is James Tawe for the public defender. Opposition, uh, Hawaii State Trial Judges Association. Also an opposition, Francine Dudois and Tom Gupa. Sorry, to totally butcher your name. That's okay, you got it right. I doubt it. Why don't you say it for me? Good morning. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, 
My name is Francine Dudola-Tugupa, and I'm the vice chair for the JSC. I am here, well, the JSC collectively strongly opposes the proposed amendment in Senate Bill 10, Met 74 for two primary reasons. Number one, politics, judiciary independence, strict confidentiality. Subjecting the Judiciary Selection Commission decisions on the retention of judges and justices to Senate confirmation after a public hearing would jeopardize judiciary independence and strict confidentiality. Principles at the heart of the current judiciary retention process. Our community places a high value on the independent ju judiciary, which is at the core of the democratic society. The citizen delegates at the 1978 State Constitutional Convention established the Judiciary Selection Commission because they were highly concerned about the potential of political influence and abuse in the judiciary selection system. They firmly believe that a Judiciary Selection Commission system would provide for more qualified and independent judiciary. Number two, retention. The impact of time on limited resources. Under the present timetable set forth in the state's constitution, the commission has consistently had to full, use the full six months period to announce the petition or retention, vet the petitioning judge, justice or judge and arrive at its decision. The commission previously allowed the, the public 90 days to pro provide comment to the commission about the petitioning justice or judge. However, the commission shortened the co comment period to 60 days in order to allow more time for the commission to more thoroughly investigate the comments that are received. The now truant and entire commission decision-making process to a total of 90 days stresses the JSD's limited resources and does a disservice to the vetting and decision-making work of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to comment on this proposed legislation. Thank you very much. Next, is there any Ferrer Executive Director or Hawaii Government Employees Association with comments? Rhonda Griswold, HSBA President, mm -hmm. with comments. Kat Brady, Community Alliance on Prisons. Morning again. Good morning again, Committee. Kat Brady testifying in opposition to this bill. We really believe an independent judiciary is the basis of a good democratic society. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Donna Oba for we League of Women Voters in Opposition, uh, David Louie, uh, Hawaii State Committee of the American College of Trial Lawyers in Opposition. Next is P Patricia McManaman, Co-Chair, Hawaii Friends of Civil Rights in Opposition, Why Women Lawyers in Opposition, Jonathan Bolton for HSPA Litigation Section in Opposition, uh, Makalika Naholo. Naholo Wa'a or Va'a for Native Hawaiian Legal Corps in opposition. Minda Yamaga, Japanese American Citizens League, Honolulu chapter, also in opposition. Uh, Daniel Padilla for Hawaii Filipino Lawyers Association, opposed. Calvin Young, former uh, for former presidents of the Hawaii State Bar Association, also opposed. Kyle uh, Wager Cruz, Earth Justice in Opposition, Simina Koba Jr., Retired Supreme Court Justice in Opposition, Ronnie Barr, Circuit Court Judge, Retired in Opposition, Marie Milks, Former Judge as well in Opposition, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten further individual, uh, ten further individual testifiers all in Opposition. Okay. That's all the uh, people who have signed up. Anybody else want to testify on SB 1074? Are you asking for people that have it? So yes. I'm sorry, I knew they had a hard time hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, I would like to. Yes, yeah, come on up. Come on up. I'll try to talk closer to the mic. Okay. Please. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, and morning. members. I, I really do apologize. I learned through COVID, I read lips better than I hear. Uh, and the masks make it a little hard. Sorry. My name's Jim Hochberg. I'm a practicing attorney here in town since 84, 39 years. Uh, I, I wanted to come and address this. I'm here for a different bill because of the idea that the Supreme Court, the judiciary would be opposed because they like the 40 year long uh, judicial commission selection process. My position is exactly the opposite. We've done a lot of things in Hawaii to try and drive public participation in government and politics and voting, like even before COVID, which caused it across the country, 
we did all mail-in ballot voting in 2019 is when that bill first came up. We want people to participate. Having the Judicial Selection Commission give the governor a list of names to pick from for judicial uh, nominations, what it does is eliminates candidates from being able to tell us in advance what kind of judges they'd like to submit, which would then help the public decide who they want to vote for, for the different Senate seats or the governor's seat. I think that's kind of helpful and it's better. So my suggestion is to take this bill, don't defer it, but take out the Judicial Selection Commission. Let's just get rid of it because politics has not been eliminated from the judicial selection process by using the Selection Commission. It just hides it. And uh, the only other thing I noticed on your notice of hearing, which I am also the president of Hawaii Family Advocates. We try to get people in the community to read bills, to come and testify, submit testimony. And I noticed that on the form of the uh, notice of hearing, it now says the number of oral testifiers may be limited by the chair. We may not be able to accommodate everyone who requests to testify orally. I understand there's time issues with the hearing scheduling and all that, but you don't have any idea how hard it is to get people to come and participate anyway. If they're going to submit written testimony, they're going to drive down here, park, come over here, and sorry. then be told. Your time has expired. I'm sorry. To, and then be told they can't testify. That really makes my job of getting people down here a lot harder. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Anyone else wish to testify in SB 1074? Mr. Farrell followed by, yes, in the back. But you can go first, Mr. Farrell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I submitted written testimony. I didn't hear my name uh, read off, but I trust it's in the record. I just wanted to briefly address a couple of things. First of all, the uh, provisions that would extend the time for the processing and decision making on a district or family judge are not a really good idea. Unlike the circuit court judges where the chief justice could appoint a district judge as an acting circuit judge, we don't have that in the district or the family court. So we do have per diems, but that's really not quite the same. So I would urge you to keep the time selection, uh, uh, time for selection relatively tight as it is today. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to mention <clears throat> was uh, just in response to my friend, Mr. Hochberg, I couldn't disagree more. Public participation is all, all well and good, but the logical extension of more public participation in the judicial selection process would be, well, let's just elect them all. And some states do that. And the real results of that have uniformly been appalling. Um, finally, with respect to having judges, justices of the Supreme Court having come back for uh, a retention confirmation hearing in the Senate, these guys, uh, it's fine that you get one crack at them before they get the job. But once they get the job, they're in a position where they have to make a lot of unpopular decisions. 30 meter telescope is a great example. Somebody is definitely gonna be upset no matter what happens. Same with information charging, drunk driving, any one of a number of other decisions. So it's important that they have the freedom to not, to do the right thing and not worry about whether they're gonna to have to come back here before the Senate and justify decisions that, and opinions that they've rendered. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. There was someone else in the back who wanted to testify. Good morning. Good morning. Aloha, Carl Senator, Chair, Senator Mike Gabbard, Vice Chair, and members of the Judiciary Committee. My name is Momi Casimiro, and I am here to speak in opposition to Senate Bill 1074. I remain a concerned citizen, deeply troubled by this bill because I am old enough to remember when political appointments resulted in a lack of trust in the judiciary. And by the way, old enough that I don't have the devices to refer to and I can't hear. So I am going to read my entire testimony, if you don't mind. Hawaii adopted the merit selection process as a result of lack of trust 
in the manner in which judges were being selected. I have served on many community boards, including the Judicial Selection Commission, the National Board of the American Judicature Society, AJS Hawaii, and currently serve on the Judicial Review Panel. I have continued this involvement because I value and trust in the independence of the judiciary. I also have confidence in the cornerstone of our constitution that established that there be three separate branches of government, administrative, executive, legislative, and judicial. The goal of the founders was to provide the necessary checks and balance to foster democratic aspirations for the people of Hawaii. William Richardson, for whom the University of Hawaii Law School is named, was a Lieutenant Governor under John A. Burns and appointed Chief Justice of the Judiciary. Okay. His my, esteemed- my, my apologies, your two minutes is up. Um, if a member after the questioning is over would like to ask you a further question, they're certainly entitled to, but I, it, we do have a two minute limit and we have, I managed to enforce it when Neil Abercrombie came to testify years ago. So yeah. I'm gonna keep enforcing it. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to testify in SB 1074? Okay, seeing none, members questions? Uh, yes, for the judiciary. Uh, Senator Sanborn went to Okay, so it seems that um, the portion about the retention petition, because it, it appears that is, is what I am strongly in favor of. What do you, one of my, two of my big gripes, as Ron Miley knows, Ron Miley knows, is that sometimes the Supreme Court justice appoints and we confirm based upon a promise um, like family court judges who have no experience in family law. And as Tom Farrell knows, especially when it comes to divorce, it is case driven and not statutory driven. So how do we, in the event that we have incompetent judges, and I've been in front of a couple of them, who were very good in doing criminal defense, but very bad in doing um, family law for which they were appointed because they were prevented from doing, from presiding over criminal cases as a conflict of interest. How do we weed out these incompetent judges if we cannot do retention? Uh, well, Senator, Wonder thank you for the question. Actually, this bill does not deal with re, um, Reappointment for judges, only for justices. Oh, justices. Yes. Sorry. No, it's okay. Hi, Ms. Ben. Other questions? Um, oh, wait a second, no, Joe. I'm sorry. Um, can I, may I? Senator Sam Boyle, I'm sorry, but you testified that it prevents you folks from doing per diem judges. So how do we um, weed out? I mean, how 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 does the Senate be able to um, chime in on incompetent per diem judges. Okay, yeah, I'd be happy to follow up with you on, on that. I, I wasn't prepared to address that, that specific question today. Um, but I, I think uh, if you have any comments about specific per diem judges, you could always uh, share those with the Chief Justice. Okay. And I have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions, members? Okay, seeing none, let's go ahead and move on to SB 1076. Uh, relating to elections, requires the Office of Elections to prepare a digital voter information guide, requires the Office of Elections to post the guide on its website, etc. First up on SB 1076 is Scott Nago, Chief Elections Officer on Zoom. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the Office of Elections stands on its written testimony, providing comments, and we have to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Kat Brady, Community Alliance for Prisons. Good morning again, Pat Brady for Community Alliance on Prisons. We really appreciate this opportunity to testify on this. You know, a vibrant democracy really 
um, depends on an informed okay. so, I'm sorry. Can you just pull the mic closer? Just Yeah, just pull the whole thing a little closer. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, a vibrant democracy really demands an informed electorate. California has been sending out guides um, to their electorate. And I think that's helped. We need to get our voter numbers up. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Next is Kenneth Conklin in support, P.L. Fritz in support, Gerald Silva in opposition. Oh, yes. Thank you. And I miss Janet Mason for League of Women Voters, who I believe is here. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair Gabbard, and members of the committee. The League of Women Voters strongly supports this bill. Uh, right, The bill is silent on what the contents of the voter guide would be, but our recommendation is to have, first and foremost, uh, candidate statements from everyone running for office, uh, secondly, to have an explanation of any ballot measures on the, on the ballot, and ideally a pro and con analysis of each of the ballot measures so people would understand it better. We, we're kind of lagging in voter education compared with the four Western states, and right now we're quite sure there's a lot of guesswork going on with um, the voting and selection of candidates, and we hope something like this which we do support electronic version of this um, with provisions made for people who need it in, per in person. We hope that um, this would eliminate the guesswork and be helpful to voters. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's all the people who have signed up to testify in SB 1076. Anyone else wishing to testify in SB 1076? Okay, seeing none, members, questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. In that case, we'll move on to SB 1078 relating to electronic citations. This establishes a statewide electronic citation program under the judiciary. First up on 1078 is Michelle Acosta, Deputy Chief Court Administrator. In support, okay. Uh, next is Michael Vincent, Deputy Director of Department of Law Enforcement. Uh, also in support, Mason Tana uh, Stace and Tanaka, Major for Honolulu Police Department. Uh, we'll yes, see. yes, we're in um, support of the bill. Great, thank you. Uh, next we have Amy Wana for Hawaii Police Department. Also in support, William Hankins in support and Gerald Silva in opposition. Uh, anyone else wish to testify in SB 1078? 1078. Okay, seeing none, member of questions. Senator Elefante. Thank you, Chair. I have a question for Major Tanaka. Hi, Major Tanaka. Hey, hey, hi, good, good morning. morning. Good morning, Senator. Yeah, thank you for being with, with us here. The, the only question and concern I have is for those that may not have access to electronic or the internet to get these citations. So in the event that this bill were to move forward, how would how would that process happen? Okay, Senator. So um, we just finished our. Uh, I'm just going to give you a quick uh, overview. So we've just finished our our finishing up on our five year pilot program, and we saw that it um, the e citations resulted in beta, uh, better data tracking for the citations um, as the information is updated live. It also allowed for better tracking of the citations given around the island, as well as allowing our officers to issue the citations more efficiently. Um, to answer your question, when the citation is given to the motorist, the officer has like a mini printer that prints out the citation. So an uh, actual hard copy is given to the motorist. It's not sent um, electronically or, you know, via email. It's uh, a hard copy, like a regular citation, is given to the motors at the time they're cited. Uh, okay, and then you said that five-year pilot, and then was that strictly the on Oahu? The red spot's gone. It was played. Yes, the um, pilot program was um, on Oahu only. Okay, thank you, Major. Thank you, Chair. Other questions, members? Uh, yeah, yeah. San Juan Ventura. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Major. Uh, Please, now, I, 
Hello. Sorry, somebody needs to mute. I, we don't, I can't tell who it is, but uh, someone online needs to mute. And may I have the officer who testified come back on? Hey, Tanaka. Major Tanaka. Um, I'm trying to um, start my video. Okay, okay thank you so um, much. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, so I see this as the potential for also um, giving out reminders to motorists. Do you see that when, if we, if we submit the, I mean, if we pass this administratively, will you folks have the IT um, software to remind motorists of their, before they get contempt citations for not showing up in court? <laughs> the citations are issued um, to the motorists at the time. So it's given to them in a um, hard copy format. So it's basically um, runs like any other citation that an officer would give them, like a written citation in a hard copy. So everything um, that applies to a regular citation, meaning one that's written um, out and issued is gonna apply to the e-citations. Okay, so you don't see it uh, as we move forward, having like a reminder feature. Cause I mean, I'm concerned with um, a lot of my, a lot of my constituents who forget when they're supposed to show up in court and end up getting a citation would, contempt. Senator, I see what you're saying. Um, however, the, the system will just function um, currently how it functions now. So if okay. I were to give you a, a normal citation, written citation, um, there are no warnings um, given uh, to show up to court. It's it's on there to show up the date and time and it's up to the motorist to mark it down on their calendar and to show up at the appropriate time that's uh, subpoenaed on the citation. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, members, other questions? Uh, Major Tanaka, before you go, do you have any information about the likely cost per county to run the electronic citation program? Or, um, you know, I cannot, I, I don't wanna speak for the other counties cause I'm not sure. However, um, for us, it'll be um, approximately um, 81,000 a year and approximately about 67,000 thereafter. Okay, so 81,000 for the first year, 67,000 thereafter, more or less. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank uh, you. Can I have uh, uh, Michelle Costa, Deputy Chief Court Administrator? Thank you. Uh, so the bill will establish and fund one permanent accountant position at the judiciary at an estimate of fifty-one thousand twenty-four dollars a year. Is that a happier salary, or is that is that what you're expecting to pay for an accountant? Chair, this this was not our bill. Okay. Um, so, but um, if we are looking at an accountant, if it's going to be more than that, it may be more than that. Um, so I can come back with that information um, because this was not our bill. We're not quite clear on what was envisioned as far as the statewide system. Um, there's a blank appropriation to the judiciary for implementation of the statewide electronic program. Do you, do you have an estimate on what it's going to cost? And I understand it's not your bill, but if you looked at that. I think one of the largest costs for us would be the integration of whatever system is um, selected by the counties. Mm -hmm. um, and we are the recipient of the data that comes in through the electronic citations. Um, so an estimated cost for that interface or in the integration is about 370000 That's uh, 370000 a year or just to stand um, up? I believe it's the, the implementation. Oh, I'm sorry, so that's... The implementation. Just, just the first year then? Right, just a one-time cost for the implementation. Okay. Um, and then in, in out years, you don't expect, except for the accountant, you don't expect any additional... Um, any additional cost? Unless the system requires us to pay a licensing fee, which would be an ongoing cost. And at this point, I would not know what system okay. would be implemented. Um, previous language, previous legislation on this has included language to fund an electronic citation program through a new electronic citation surcharge. Does, this, does the judiciary have a preference for how the program should be funded? 
if the judiciary only has the implement implementation fee cost, the one-time cost, um, there would not really be an ongoing cost for the judiciary would be on the receiving end. So I think for this, it would be more of a county uh, cost for their ongoing. Um, okay. Okay. Um, all right, I think that's it. Hang on, let me stumble. Yeah, thank you very much. Members, any other questions before we move on? Anything else that we did? Okay, moving on to the next bill. Oh, okay, yeah, I think. I remember you had another second. Okay, moving on to SB 1100, proposes amendments to Article 7, Section 12 of the Hawaii Constitution to authorize the counties to issue tax increment bonds. Um, Members, before we uh, start this bill, I'm going to take a short recess. So about, I don't know, a short recess. Uh, okay, reconvening on SB uh, the Judiciary Committee on this uh, Friday, <clears throat> excuse me, Friday morning, we'll pick up with SB 1100, proposing amendment to Article 7, Section 12 of the Hawaii Constitution to authorize the counties to issue tax increment bonds. First up on 1100 is Randall Nishiyama, Deputy Attorney General. Good morning. Good morning. Deputy Attorney General Randall Nishiyama for the Department of the Attorney General. We have provided our written comments and I am available for your questions. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, next is Tammy Lee, State Department of Transportation in support. Next is Scott, Lynn, Dr Scott Glenn, Director, Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Scott Glenn with the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. We submitted testimony in support with comments and I just wanted to uh, let the committee know that I have with me here today um, from the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development, Harrison Rue, our Transit Oriented Development Program Manager, who would be able to answer any questions about how these how these bonds could be put to use to advance state goals. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next is Jade McMillan for Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Good morning, Chair. Good morning. This is Jade McMillan on behalf of Tamiya Machika and Tax Foundation of Hawaii. We submitted comments on the measure. Uh, we'll stand on our written comment. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's all. That's everyone who signed up on SB 1100. Anyone else wish to testify on SB 1100? Okay, seeing none, members, questions? Um, so I guess for Mr. Rue, since you went to the trouble of coming, mm -hmm. um, So if, if this if this constitutional amendment does successfully pass, do you believe this will speed increase the speed of county projects? Um, I, I would say it, it's a tool that the counties have wanted to explore for several years. In my former work at the city, we we worked on uh, analyzing potential use of TIFs, particularly in districts like Evale. Um And uh, I, I would not say that the the city or any other counties, to my knowledge, are committed to the use of it, but very interested in exploring it. And this barrier has, you know, has been a little bit of a way to, um, as an obstacle to that. Okay. I should mention we're doing a state study right now on TOD financing, and this is one of the tools our consultants are exploring. So it would certainly help if this bill passed to give that reality. But the, is the state, does this affect the state or does this only affect the counties? Uh, well, uh, the state as owner and developer of 2,000 acres along the, the rail line here and, and some of the other you know counties might be worth exploring it. The state as a developer or landowner could definitely take use, make use of this uh, to help provide and provide value capture for the development and payment for infrastructure and things like that on the state properties. Okay. So uh, I think some have testified that we also need to amend uh, section 13 of the of the same article regarding the debt determination. Do you have an opinion on that? 
Um, we did comment that there is an admin bill um, that was drafted before uh, my tenure here, uh, but there's an admin bill that does recommend um, uh, a, a amending both section 12, which allows it to be used in section 13, which excludes those from the debt of the counties. Uh, my personal opinion is that's probably necessary, but we will be further consulting with the AG uh, about okay. that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah sir. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Administrator Roof, nice to see you at the state. You too, Senator. Yeah. Uh, a couple of questions I have, it's more kind of a process. So this would allow the counties to do tax increment bonds, yet the counties would, this is step one of the process. The counties would still have to authorize it if they choose to do so, is that correct? That's correct, yes. And as a follow-up to that, in you coming over from the city, you've seen how TOD plans have developed throughout the years. Uh, where do you feel from a state perspective, as you just testified on how many lands that the state owns in terms of acreage, mm -hmm or possibly we could apply this to in TOD areas or districts? Uh, the part where we have explored, and I should say in partnership with the state, the city and the state have been looking at Evil A for many years and figuring out how to fund the infrastructure there. So Evil A would be a great target. Um, it could have been used in, in Kakaako district for 40 years, Aloha Stadium, any of the other areas where there's possibly in East Kabbalah, um, and the other major areas as part of that study that we're currently conducting with all four counties statewide, there may be uh, some areas in, in the other counties that it could be considered for as well. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ru. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nishiyama, can you come up? So it's the same question I asked Mr. Ryu about the, uh, the amendment to section 13 of that same article. Does that need to be done for this to work? Yes, there is a cloud according to our state spawn council on the exclusion of tax increment financing from the debt limit of the counties. So to remove that cloud, we would need to amend Article 7, Section 13 of the state constitution. And that would ensure that these bonds would not be challenged. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Members, any other questions? Okay, seeing none, let's go ahead and move on to the next bill, which is SB 1101. This conforms state debt limit statement law to include tax increment bonds for the constitutional amendment authorizing use of such bonds and include, excluding such bonds from determination the county's funded debt is ratified. First on SB 1101 is uh, Mr. Nishi, Nishiyama from the Attorney General. Randall Nishiyama for the Department of the Attorney General. We have provided our comments and I'm available for your questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Tammy Lee, uh, State Department of Transportation and Support. Scott Glenn, Director, Office of Planning and Sustainable, Sustainable Development. Chair, we stand on our uh, testimony and support and Mr. Root is available for questions. And support, okay, thank you. Uh, Jade McMillan or Tom Yamachika for uh, Tax Foundation. Hello, good morning. Uh, yes, we'll stand on our written comments on this measure, thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's all the testifiers we have on SB 1101. Does anyone else wish to testify on SB 1101? Okay, members, questions? Okay, hearing none, let's go ahead and move on to SB 1167, proposing an amendment to the Hawaii State Constitution to protect individual reproductive rights. Proposes a constitutional amendment to protect an individual's reproductive right in their most intimate decisions, including the right to abortion and contraceptives. First up on SB 1167 is Department of Health. Good morning. Oh, no, you're not. <clears throat> Sorry, you're not the Department of Health. Uh, Department of Health has comments. Uh, Robin Wurzel for Hawaii Civil Rights Commission. Uh, thank you, Chair Rhodes, Vice Chair Gabbard, and members of the committee. Um, I'm Robin Wurzel for the Hawaii Civil Rights Commission. Um, we've submitted testimony under William Hoshijo's name. Um, the HCRC uh, stands on its written testimony in support of Senate Bill 1167. We are available for any questions if needed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next is John Zickel, President of Americans for Democratic Action Hawaii, and support Rennie Soon for uh, Academy of <laughs> ACOG. Obstetricians and gynecologists, American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. In support, Cat Brady Community Alliance on Prisons. 
Good morning. Good morning again. At Brady for Community Alliance on Prisons. We are in full support of this measure. This is health care. And we don't want to be learned, uh, known as the land of gun care and health control. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up is Dennis Young, uh, State Party Chair for the Democratic Party of Hawaii in support. Pat McManaman, Co-Chair for Hawaii Friends of Civil Rights, uh, also in support. Uh, Eva Andrade, Hawaii Family Forum in opposition. Are you with the Hawaii Family Forum? Did you? No, advocates. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> My bad. Uh, in opposition, Pride at Work in support. Gora Siegel Matsunaga, Save a Medicaid Hawaii in support. It's Michael Galoya Jr. for Stonewall Caucus, the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Senator. On behalf of the Stonewall Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii, my name is Michael Galoya Jr. I am chair. I, we stand in support of this, uh, this uh, bill. Um, the only reason we're here is because five Supreme Court justices perjured themselves before Congress saying, and with the Dobbs decision overturning Roe v. Wade. Um, so we don't want to see that happening here. Um, we do want to point out that all those in opposition to this measure are the same people that don't show up when we are actually looking to take care of the kids that are already here. They don't show up for education. They don't show up for uh, anything that does protect our keiki once they are here. So um, that it comes off quite, uh, they're not pro-life, they're anti-choice. And they don't do anything to support uh, health care. Uh, health rights. So we encourage you to pass this um, bill to, so it can move forward. And thank you for your time. Mahalo. Thank you. Next up is Catherine Glenn Foster, Americans for, uh, sorry, yes, Americans United for Life in opposition. Alan Goodby Carson. It's uh, maybe on Zoom. Alan Goodby Carson. Uh, not present on Zoom, Chair. Not present. Okay. Uh, she's in support. Yvonne Marin in support. Uh, I see your name. There you go. Hi. Go ahead. Good morning. Hi, good morning, uh, Chair Rhodes, Vice Chair Gabbard, Chair De La Cruz, Vice Chair Keith Argan, and all members of the committee. My name is Yvonne Woodin, and I am a MSW and practicum student specializing in health and medical social work. I fully support Senate Bill 1167 and stand by my testimony for improving the Hawaii state constitution and protecting the freedom of individual reproductive rights out of respect for women, human rights, and autonomy. Evidence by American and international obstetricians and gynecologists indicates that restrictive laws limit access for women when seeking reproductive and general health care and contraception. And action for improvement is a distinct reminder that women's reproductive rights are limited. So having a choice to control reproductive rights will provide safe resources and lift limitations for health care for women to have access to choice when seeking reproductive education and services. As a woman, mother, and practicum medical social work student who works in public health care, it is critical that I advocate by helping improve health care for women, human rights, and freedom for patients now and in the future. Thank you for your time and the opportunity to testify. Thank you very much. Uh, next is Jim Hochberg, Esquire. Good morning again. Good morning again, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee members. My name is Jim Hochberg. As I said earlier, I've been practicing law in Hawaii for 39 years, actually. I do a lot of litigating over all those years of uh, First and Second Amendment constitutional issues in federal and state court. So when I'm looking at this, I'm looking at it more from what are the unintended consequences of the language as, to po as opposed to the substantive issues. And basically, it's, it's got a lot of landmines in it because even if we don't want to admit it, we all know individuals can't get pregnant. So really, the, the individuals in society that are capable of getting pregnant are the ones that have the abortion issue. And so one of the hidden landmines I see in this is contrary to the years of abortion uh, legal action in Hawaii, are we saying now that the other half of the pregnancy team that doesn't actually get pregnant now gets reproductive rights and can get involved in the pregnant person's choice on abortion? I mean, that's 
that's in there. I mean, it's hidden in there. The other thing is there are, oh, you know what? It's kind of hard to see that too. It's, um, there are currently limits in Hawaii in the abortion statute. There are age limits without parental consent. There are uh, viability standards and all of that might get wiped out by this. Um, and then the other thing is when you have a constitutional amendment that has language in it that says, including these things, then that begs the question, and what else? So it's kind of a poorly worded amendment to put in the Constitution, except for people like me who get to work for years litigating what it means. I mean, there are better ways to do it. And so I'm opposed to this from that perspective, and I do thank you for the opportunity to talk about it. Thank you. Uh, next we have Cheryl B. in support, Nico Leverance in support, Corley Matayoshi in support, Christine Villa Floor in support. Okay, and then we have uh, an entire page in support of individuals. And then we have uh, about half a page in opposition and then a couple more in support. So at this point, I'll just say, any, as anybody else wish to testify in SB 1167, either Zoom or here in person? SB 1167. Okay, seeing none, members questions? I got a question. Sir, go. Uh, for Mr. Hopeberg. Uh, sir, you mentioned the um, the age situation. So, what, what what's your suggestions for defining the age when these rights arise, since it's not mentioned in the bill? So, I'm not sure I understand the question. It has to do with the age. Age. Of so, like currently, I believe pregnant women, girls that are 14 years old can get abortion services in Hawaii without parental consent, but you can possibly get pregnant earlier than that. And those earlier girls either need parental consent or uh, somebody has to lie about how old they are. This says no law shall be enacted that denies or interferes. We already have laws that restrict in little ways. You know, Hawaii is not the most restrictive abortion state in the country, but there are some restrictions. And this it seems to me as a litigator is saying they all have to be they're repealed by implication if this were to pass okay thank you thank you so just to follow up to that mr hopeberg so you, you said you litigate second amendment cases as well i mean the the, the language of senator i really have a hard time hearing no, sir. uh you said you litigated second amendment cases as well correct and the, the language in the, the U well, actually they're the same in the U.S. Constitution and the state constitution are pretty broad. It does, there's no um, there's no indication whatsoever that you can't own a gun at age six. So, but we've most states restrict. Well, the second amendment case that I litigated was Livingston versus Ballard, which was resolved two months ago. But this is this is more of a this is a constitutional this is a constitutional question. Just because the statute, just because the constitution says. You have a right to have a gun. It doesn't mean that you can't be restricted in some way. Yeah, but that's not what this bill says. This bill wants to put into the Constitution a restriction on laws that interfere with the right. And since you already have laws that interfere with the right, I'm guessing this is a repeal by implication. I but I, I don't know. Okay. That would have to be litigated and determined. That's my point. Okay. Thank you. Can I follow up on that? Sure, go ahead. Okay, so I fully understand as a lawyer who also um, practice in appellate courts, um, what you're saying. So if this was reworded to be similar in text to that of the Second Amendment, which basically Second Amendment says a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Um, so if it's similarly worded to say, um, the right of the people to abortion and contraceptives shall not be infringed. Wouldn't that allow for the kind of administrative regulations that we are seeing with the guns 
and to allow us to keep the kind of regulations we have in the state of Hawaii. Well, the age thing still remains in there. And in fact, under the Second Amendment, there are attempts across the country currently to restrict the exercise of the Second Amendment based on age. And some courts are saying the Second Amendment in the U.S. Constitution doesn't have an age requirement. It says shall not be infringed. And so that would probably play out here for parents of girls under 14, or if, if you eliminated the restriction under 14, then there would be no 14 and older without consent. So you might be opening up to parents of 17 year olds and younger challenging their child, their daughter, having an abortion without their consent. That, that's the problem with this. It's, it really, what you, I think what you guys really want to do is say, we want Roe v. Wade in our constitution. And there are, are, this isn't Roe v. Wade. This is way beyond Roe v. Wade. So it's, it's just got a lot of constitutional problems in it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Other questions, members? Okay, if not, we will, unless people, unless anyone feels the need to break for decision making, we'll go into decision making. Bill, what do you say? Okay, first, 482 is appropriates funds for the judiciary for its fiscal biennium beginning uh, July 1, 2023 and ending uh, June 30, 2025. Uh, the recommendation here is to pass with one amendment. I'd like to add an additional uh, $5 million for the, uh, to speed up the repairs of the elevators at Kahumani Pale since they can be done quicker if we had more money in. That's it. Um, may I comment? Yeah, of course. Uh, may I ask also for an addition of $75,000 for the one to three court for the third circuit court? Sure, I'm happy to put that in there as well. Thank you very much. Let's see, how's it gonna work though in terms of, do you have to have it? Um, yeah, let's go with the Appreciate that, Chair. Thank you very much. And then that's seventy-five plus. That's okay. that's what was in the bill. Seventy-five or one seventy-five. I'm sorry. It, it said only seventy-five. 75. Okay. That's why I figured okay. I could so throw it in somewhere. Two minutes. Oh, two two, two amendments. <laughs> seventy-five thousand for the zero to three court in uh, in the third circuit, and uh, an additional five million for elevators in the first circuit. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions or concerns? If not, I share for the vote. Chair's recommendation to pass SB 482 with amendments. Uh, Chair Rose. Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Elefante. Aye. Senator San Bonaventura. Aye. Senator Owa. Aye. Measure passes. Thanks, members. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next up is SB 992. <laughs> that was 992, proposing an amendment to Article 6, Section 3 of the Hawaii State Constitution to increase the mandatory retirement age for ju justices and judges to 75 from 70. Uh, recommendations to pass as is. Questions or concerns? I'm going to vote no on this one. Okay. Just because I would have liked it to see, go the Kansas route to get, you know, <laughs> okay. to see how the public would have let down this said before right. we go to the middle. Understood. Uh, anybody else? If no. not. Sorry. A anyone else? If not, Vice Chair. Chair's recommendations to pass SB 992, uh, unamended. Of the members present, are there any no votes or reservations? Oh, yeah, yeah. No no Senator Owen. Measure passes. Okay, thank you. Next up, members, is SB 1074, proposing amendments to the Constitution of the state to amend the manner in which justices and judges are appointed, consented to, and retained. Um, recommendation is to uh, do a stripped down version of this. What I would like to keep. And so that means we're getting rid of everything else. What I would like to keep is uh, making it so that the results of not having a confirmation hearing is the same for district judges as it is for everybody else. So for circuit and above, if the Senate does not confirm, then they automatically become a judge. With the district court judges, it gets kicked back I don't remember how the process works. We've never let it happen, but um, so we make it so that if you if the Senate does not confirm, district court judges in addition to everybody else will be automatically confirmed. Now I'd also like to change the time 
that the Senate has to confirm to right now we have 30 days to confirm. I'd like to change it to 45 days. Uh, this often comes up in the summer and it's difficult to get people here because uh, it's, it's a part-time legislature. And I think that's it. So it's a pretty stripped down version. Let's see, who am I looking for? That's it. Questions or concerns? Um, I am going to vote with reservations. I believe we need a way to kick out um, incompetent judges. So uh, um, I'm going to vote with reservations. Okay. Understood. Senator Fonte. Chair, I appreciate the amendments, um, which does strip it down. However, uh, I'll be voting no. Okay. All right. Senator Gabbard, for vote. Okay, uh, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 1074 with amendments. Uh, Chair Rhodes. I'll vote aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Elefante. No. Senator Buenaventura. Reservations. And Senator Owa. No. Oh. And the measure passed. Thank you. Let's see. Moving on to SB 1076, this requires the Office of Elections to prepare a digital voter information guide. Uh, recommendation on this one is to uh, pass with some amendments. Uh, would add info on the would add info on the mailing deadlines, drop box, box locations, and for same day voter registration and accessible voting locations and opening hours of voter service centers. So that would be in addition to the other information that would be required by uh, the uh, the digital, um, what am I calling this thing? Digital voter information guide. Also, we would put printed copies in the library and in the committee report, we'll put in the, the dollar amounts that we believe are necessary, 143,280 for the primary, I'm sorry, 100, 143,280 for the entire election. The primary would be 98,280 and the general would be 45,000. That will go on the committee report. That's it, questions, concerns? Senator Owa. I like this one, but voting no, only because don't agree with the mail-in system. Okay. <laughs> Any other concerns or questions? If not, Vice Chair. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 1076 with amendments. Let's see, any members with no's or reservations? Senator Owa is a no vote. Mr. Eyes, the measure passes. Thank you. Next up is SB 1078 relating to electronic citations establishes a statewide electronic citation system under the judiciary. Uh, the recommendation here is to go ahead and pass it out. Uh, pass it out unamended, unamended, but in the committee report, we'll put in the $370,000 one-time expense that the judiciary believes it will need. And I think that's it. Is that right? For now, that's it. Okay, for now, that's it. All right, uh, that's so no no amendment, but committee report language. Uh, questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 1078 as is. Are the members present? Are there any no votes or reservations? No vote. Noting a no vote for Senator Owa, the measure passes. Okay, next up we have SB 1100. This proposes amendments to Article 7, Section 12 of the Hawaii Constitution to authorize the county to issue tax increment bonds. Testimony being that both Section 12 and 13 need to be uh, amended to uh, do what the counties need to have done. Uh, I'm going to defer this one and we'll plan to hear. I think it's SB 1295, which includes both. So that was deferred. Next is SB 1101. This conforms state debt limit statement law to include tax increment bonds, a constitutional amendment authorizing the use of such bonds and excluding such bonds from determinations of counties funded debt is ratified. Uh, if we pass 1295, which I anticipate that we will, uh, this bill will still be relevant. So we'll go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and pass this one unamended. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. SB 1101, Chair's recommendation to pass as is. 
Are there any no votes or reservations with the members present? Hearing none, the measure passes. Thank you, members. Next up is SB 1167, proposing amendment to the YU state constitution to protect individual reproductive rights. Proposes a constitutional amendment to protect an individual's reproduction freedom in their most intimate decisions, including a right to abortion conception. Uh, recommendation is to pass with an amendment. Uh, instead of saying no, uh, no law shall be passed to um, abridge the right to abortion contraception, we'll say no law shall no law shall be enacted nor any state action taken that denies or interferes with an individual's product or reproduction freedom. Questions or concerns? If not, yeah. I... excuse me, I'm just going to make a comment. Sure. Um, my requested amendment is to rewrite this to be similar to the second amendment, basically saying that the right of privacy being necessary for the health and well-being of the people, the right of the people to contraception and abortion shall not be infringed. But otherwise, I'll be voting on. Okay, um, I think it, for us, for this committee, I think it's probably too late to do that. But there isn't; it does go on. So uh, I would suggest, I would suggest making that suggestion should the next chair, if you are inclined to. Any yeah. any other questions or concerns? If not, vice chair for the vote. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 1167 with amendments. Uh, chair Rhodes. Aye. Vice chair votes no. Senator Elefante. Aye. Senator San Buenaventura. Aye. Senator Owa. No. The measure passes. Thank you very much. That concludes our business today. For today, thank you very much for being here.